I'm going to record this session for record keeping purposes and so that we can share with you uh, after the session so you can again take a look at what was discussed. So I was asking, yeah, so see someone, honestly, I did not understand. That's Ishmael David. Okay, thanks, David. So how many of you did not understand? How many of you felt like it's, they still need quite some time to understand what it is and what it does? Okay, seeing Uase Itambineza Esterine. Said me, yes, thank you. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of me already. All right, so I was just making sure that we did not, we're not going to waste two hours of our time going through a session that you actually don't need. So I'm glad that uh, some people still feel like they need to understand, they need extra, an extra session to understand the concepts. So that's why we're doing this. So if you're one of those, that you feel like you still need some time to understand what's going on, please be attentive because we're going to go through it and this will be, hopefully, uh, will leave you with a better understanding and you will make good use of it afterwards. So without much further ado, let's get started. So we're talking version control today. I'm um, thinking everybody can see my screen. So we're talking version control continued. Um, me who's presenting is Samal Nishime. I'm the senior coordinator. I'm a senior coordinator at Andela in the engineering program. Please take your mic. Sam, can you make me a call? Thanks, okay. I just thought I hadn't seen you yet. All right. So, yeah, welcome to version control continued. I'm Samuel Nishinge. I'm a coordinator at Endala in the engineering program. And uh, this is my email. You can reach out to me if you like. And we are uh, starting our session on uh, version control. Let's get started. We have a couple of goals for this session. By the end of this session, you should be able to differentiate what is a local and what is a remote. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with the way I present, I don't give you enough information, but I give you enough to help you remember when you see it. Uh, again, like after we've gone through the session, you can again look at the goals and say, see if you've really understood it or not, but I'll not give you much information for the moment. So we'll see what is local versus remote. We'll look at what is version control, make sure we understand it. We'll look at the differences between version control systems. We'll look at commits and branches, see what that is, um, see is there any similarity between commits and branches or is, uh, there are no similarities between the two. We'll also look at the benefits of uh, using version control. And we'll, finally, we'll look at a couple of pro tips to help you in case you wanna go further and uh, ace up your game with uh, on using version control. So yeah, remember these slides, these are the goals. By the end of the session, you should be able to look back at the goals and say, hey, I've understood this. If some of the things are not clear, then you've not met the 
ask petitions and I would want you to again go through the content and make sure you understand and if things don't, are not clear reach out to me or someone else your TTL and uh, ask questions to make sure that you get a better understanding all right let's start with the revision we have a uh, We'll have a knowledge check since we've done Git on uh, the last session. We'll just have a couple of things to go through and uh, see if you you understood something. If there's still some knowledge that was left, you know what they say about knowledge. Knowledge is what remains after everything else has disappeared. So let's see what we still remember from that. So based on uh, the previous session. Based on the previous session, what is Git? Who can tell us what's Git? Nobody? What's Git? No one wants to tell us. Yes, uh, sorry, Mike, check. Check. Uh, as, uh, for me, I think that uh, Git is an open source where uh, like developers share their codes. Uh, it's like a storage of codes where like someone can, can share his codes to someone for him to review or like some feedbacks. Yes. Thanks, Eve. Uh, is, do you think that uh, if you followed what Eve told us, is that correct or something missing? Or... Please, who, who is Ariette? You're Ariette. We can hear you. Kaijuka, Ariette, we can hear you. Come on. So I was asking, I'm seeing one hand raised. So, Muda Chumura Bruno Blaise. Do you want to tell us? Okay, thank you. Uh, in my opinion, Git is, is a version of control where uh, developers uh, manage their project, their project. So if you say it's an open source where, so is it like a place on earth? Is it a location on your computer? What do we call that? What, what is it really? So we have another answer in, uh, we have actually a couple of answers in the chat, control, version controller, a version controller. Okay, we'll see about that. Used to manage software code is a free open source distributed version control system. Okay, we'll see uh, all that as we proceed through the session. What's a repository? What's a repository? Pacific Niringango. Mark check. Check. A uh, repository is like a folder on Git where you store your work or your codes thanks yeah okay. yeah thank you so how do we interact with git
through commands. Marie Ishimne. Why do we write those commands? <laughs> So, um, Teresa, can you repeat the question? I think the, for the question is on the screen, how do we interact with Git? Then I think your answer is through commands. And I'm like, why do we type those commands? I don't remember the platform, but it is something that looks like command prompt, but then it is for Git. I don't know the name to. Yeah, looks like a command prompt. Um, is it, does it, or oh, it's actually a command prompt. So we'll see what that looks like when you're doing a demo, but it's actually a command prompt and also known as a terminal. Omar Nirurugo has typed it. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's also known as a terminal and we can also use git bash on, uh, on, uh, on on Windows systems, mostly. I think you can use Git Bash everywhere, but it's typically used on Windows. What's the difference between master and main? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. What's the difference between master and main? Janet Wamahoro, it's like there's no difference. So technically there's no difference, but you could, there could be a difference. So it's like, if I ask, so this is like asking a question of, uh, of uh, what's the difference between Toyota and Ande? Like, or yeah, like Toyota and Ande. At the basic level, they are all cars, okay? But you could find a difference and say, Toyota cars are made from Japan, while Ande cars are made from South Korea. So at the, at the basic level, master and main are the typical names for branches. But other than that, there are no differences between them. I remember someone asked a question on the previous call, and that's why I had to put it in and see if they still remember. There's a slight difference in, um, that has a bit of a history to do with naming conventions and uh, things to do with uh, Black Lives Matter and all that. But technically, there's no really difference between, between the two. What's a staged file? What is it? What's a staged file? Um, sorry, uh, I was still on the last point of uh, staged file. But I'm still waiting for you. Kivuka, okay, Eve, do you want to tell us something? Uh, yes. Uh, for me, I think stage files is uh, is commands used to uh, to push your course to GitHub. A stage like, uh, file like... is not a command. So, like, you should be careful of the words you use to define. So, when you start explaining a staged file by saying the word command, then you lost something. Do you want to rephrase? And try again. I'm a bit stuck. I don't know how to rephrase it. 
process. <laughs> okay, but it sounds like you have an idea, but uh, it's not exactly what that is. Okay, we'll look at what a stage five is. So I've, I had five questions. You are able to answer four. One is still remaining. That means you understood it, but not so well. So let's go through it again and make sure that we understand it. Source code management, what we also called um, version control systems. So you, you'll find you'll find somewhere they're called source code management. As a matter of fact, remember Git website is called Git SCM. So if you are if you didn't know what SCM means in the domain name of Git SCM means Git source code management. So that's what we're looking for. But that's what we're looking at today. What is it? What is source code management? It's a system that records changes made to your computer code to your project's files on your computer. So basically, at the basic level, it's a system. It's a way of recording changes, keeping records of changes that are made to your project that you're working on. I have a picture for illustration purposes. We have a time, we have your project, and we have a view of the version control system. So the time is like 2013 uh, in, in, uh, in October on 7th, then again, 2013, uh, October on 9th, and 2013, October on the 12th. There were City, like the exact situation of the project on this date. There were new changes on uh, about that HTML on uh, October 9th, and there were even more changes on October 12th on your system. You can see that there are some messages, add headline to index page, create about page. As you see, there was a second page on uh, October 9th and change page layout. <laughs> So this is uh, a picture that illustrates uh, the point of recording changes. So you see that there were new things that were added to the project and they were tracked using a source code management system. Why do we need source code management? Who can tell us why, why you think we need it? Somebody? I check. Check. Uh, for me, I think that to have source code management is very important because as its definition, your file can be corrupted with someone else or can be get any difficult. So it is better to be aware about your project, what is the, how your project will be managed. Yeah, thank you. That's true. Someone else? Mic check. Check. Yes, we need a source code control management because we need to collaborate with other developers while we are working on same project yeah thank you those are yeah that's also a valid reason this is what we have we have a couple of benefits keeping track of project changes we have going back in time keeping track of project changes that's obvious we've we've seen how there were new changes added to the project in the previous illustration going back in time who can tell me what this means No one has an idea what this means? Mike, check. Check. Uh, I think 
in case we have we want to go back and check the previous code uh, if we meet with some challenges or some errors and then we want to undo i think we go back to to the previous code yeah yeah that's right think of it as undo is in microsoft word or in your vs code editor So remember when you do undo, you go back to the changes you've made. You can do the same thing by using Git. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, Microsoft Word or VS Code have some sort of uh, version controlling that's going on or Google Doc, any of those. Backup, have a, keep a backup with a project's history. You have a backup. So every time if something goes wrong, you can always go back to it and find your project intact. You have a seamless workflow when working with teams, a seamless workflow. What is, okay, someone just touched on it. If you're working with other people, we'll see that it can help you put together the work you've made separately in an easy manner. So you can have, uh, there are certain commands that will help you to put together the work you've done in a seamless way. That's what I meant by seamless workflow with teams. Allows to troubleshoot what has been changed. If something is not going well, if your current status of your project is corrupt, you can trace the, or the, the cause easily by using Git. These are some of the benefits you can even find more. We have, let's look at SCM in use. How is it used um, in the software engineering industry today? We have three different tools or ways that SCM tools are used. We have what we call local version control systems, which are databases that keep changes under one revision locally. So you'll have a uh, project, you'll have some application that you'll install and it will allow you to track changes that you've made and the records will be stored locally on your computer. An example is what we call RCS. There's what we call a centralized version control system. This is where the, we have a server as the source of truth and then it has a record of clients that checked out files. So if you if you use, if, if you talk to someone who's been in the software engineering industry for like 20 years, you'll hear them talk of uh, checkout files. You check it, you blah, blah, blah. They use words like that because this is how they used to do it in the past. Uh, this was very common, like in the early 2000s and somewhere there. People will just have some sort of server that will keep track of who has check out which file and who has modified it and uh, and make sure that everyone can see uh, can see the record of uh, the changes that have made, been made. Who can tell us one obvious disadvantage to this? Think of a single server as the source of truth. Don't you see a problem with that? Brian Ishimne, I see your hand raised. You want to tell us something? I think the disadvantage of having WhatsApp is that when it crashes, all okay. the clients uh, stop. You don't have access to anything. Yeah. It just, the, when, when the server stops, no, no. all others are affected. Yeah, 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 that's true. Mike, check, Dodo, could you help us? Sorry, with, uh, whoever is 
Okay. Mike check Francoise. Okay, so so I'm sorry if you are making a lot of noise for us, I'll be forced to kick you out of the meeting. So because we cannot lose time, you're not following, you're doing something else, you have your Zoom opened and we're losing time and you're also wasting your own time too. So if someone is not able to mute them, their mic on multiple attempts, I'll just kick you out of the Zoom meeting. I'm sorry, that's, there's nothing else I can do, but we have to proceed and uh, seems it's the only way we can deal with it. So yes, you, thanks, Brian. One of the, the obvious disadvantage is that if the server has an issue, then we lose, um, we lose track of where we are. And there are ways, of course, they used to deal with this, but it was still not so efficient. So then we have what we call a distributed version control system where changes are mirrored in multiple locations. So what do we mean by changes mirrored? So we have a we have a project then for everyone who is using that project they have a copy of it on their local machine and then this is what mean by mirrored so it has to be as the same as the um, what there could be differences between that and uh, the main project file but at the end of the day, it is necessary that we have that everyone keep track of who has made what changes and make sure that you get changes that have been made by someone else. So the example of, oh, example for, um, for centralized version control systems is like what we call subversion. Distributed is what we call Git. So now you know that Git is one type of version control, but there exists other types of version control. Remember that. This is, uh, this is very important, so I'll, I'll repeat it. Git is one type of version control, but there exists other types of version controls. I'll use an example. Git is like Toyota. Toyota is a type of car but not every car is Toyota. In other words, not every version control system is Git, okay? You'll find some other version systems that are not Git, just like you find cars that are not Toyota. You can find German cars, UK cars like Range Rover. You can find South Korea cars, cars like Hyundai, but those are all still cars and Toyota is just like one of them. So think of Git as Toyota and version control systems as cars in general. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Mike, check. Any questions so far? Yes. Back to uh, first one, local version control system. I didn't understand well. So, how it differ from centralized version control system. So centralized is not stored on your computer. It's stored on some server that is shared by the team. So if you have a team of people, you have you at the office, at the office, you know, people have servers. We don't, we don't work on our computers only. We have servers that keep like, like that serves other computers on the network. So one of those servers will have uh, CVCS installed on it, and that will be the server that controls project changes. Local version control systems is it's done on your computer. Everything is done on a computer, but it manage it helps you to see what changes you've made. So you do it. The difference is in one being local and the other other being on net on a, on a server in a network. So 
Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. Thanks. Another question? All right, let's proceed. Git. So we are Record. focusing on Git. Um, well, uh, frankly speaking, um, I've, I've not used any other sub, uh, any other version control system. I know about them. Just like uh, when I started learning computer science, uh, were, we used to learn about those things. But when I started practicing, Git was the top version control system. And so that's the one they picked up. So that's one that we'll be looking at. And you, there's nothing much to worry about because it's the one that is largely in use today. So we'll look at what we call snaps. What are Git snaps? Git snaps, snapshots, also known as commits, it's a state of your project according to Git at any given point. So a Git snapshot, also called a commit, is a state of your project according to Git. So according is a keyword here. So a state of your project according to Git might be different from the actual state of your project. Why is this? Because you could be having some files that are not tracked by Git intentionally or unintentionally. So if they're not tracked by Git, Git will not know about them. So when we say commits, it's what Git knows. Git will allow you not to, to ignore certain things. So the things you've ignored, Git will not look at it. Or the things you've not tracked explicitly, Git will not know about it. So a commit is a set of a project according to Git at a given point. We can have three straight states for every file. We can have uh, a staged a staged file. Remember I asked what's a staged file. It's a marked file ready to be committed. In other words, it's a file that you have put right in front of Git and say, hey, I've made this work. I want you to keep it for me. So by committing, you tell Git to keep the, the work that has been done for you. We have what we call modified, but uh, the state of modified. It's a file that has changes, changes, but which have not been staged. So if we have a file, it's been modified locally on our computer, and we, but then we did not tell Git to look at the changes we've made, then we'll, Git will mark that file as modified. Then we can have a committed file, which is a stamped and stored as the latest snapshot. So if a file has just been committed, that means Git has created a stamp, a stamp, it has stamped that file at a certain point in time with the changes that have been made. Those are the three states that a file can have in Git. Any questions about this? Okay. Could you repeat those? Repeat, repeat what exactly? Stages. Stage. Are, are you asking me about stages? I'm sorry, states. Staged. A staged is a file that has been, that is being tracked by Git, that is first and has active changes that are known to Git that are ready to be committed. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at what that looks like in practice, but all you need to, uh, if, to understand this is that there are two, there are a couple of things here. The file is known to Git, that means it's being tracked. The file has changes, then the file, the changes have been put in a, location where they're ready to be committed. We'll come back to this when we were doing some practice of we'll see what that, what that looks like in, uh, 
in practice. So this is practice time. Uh, we will go ahead and do some work on our computer. And uh, I'll first do some work. You look at what I've done. You'll, you'll, like, you'll also do it locally. You'll also push on your Git repository. So this is a live demo, not a demo really. It's a live session where you look at what I do. You do it also manually on the computer. And then uh, we see if you are able to follow along. So we'll, we'll have a look at some Git commands. So let's start with setup. So we're going to set up our project. And uh, this involves initializing our project. So we'll start with initializing our project. So I'll start presenting. I'll go to I'll go to, hold on, let me show you my VS code. So this is my VS code. So we are going to create a new directory, which will eventually become our new repository. So how do I do that? I'll first create a directory on my computer, then I will open it using, using VS code. So just a second. I'm just going to create a, a directory. You can do it if you like. It's pretty simple. I just call it pretty cars. Okay. So just call it pretty cars. I'll go ahead and open a new repository. I'll go to my system, GitHub, uh, pretty cars. Yeah, this is it, pretty cars. So I have an empty, an empty repository. You can see from here, there's nothing inside this uh, project. I'll go ahead and initialize Git. Uh, don't worry about this. This is just to set up my, my system. Don't worry about it. Okay, we'll go ahead and, so the first command, how do we initialize our Git? How do we tell Git to track our project? You've done this before, I'm sure. So we'll just go ahead and do Git initialize, Git init. So we'll say, it has initialized an empty Git repository in users, blah, 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 blah. This is the path. Okay, so we don't see it here because as you can see, it's a hidden file. It's a hidden folder, you can see. We'll do what with it. We'll add a couple of files. Let's say we wanna add an index.html. So if you look at how do you know the status, if you wanna know the status of your project, of your project at any given, I was gonna say the repository. If your project at any given point, the command to do that will be git status. So let's do git status to see our, the status of our project. We'll see that I'm on branch master, no commits yet, nothing to commit. That means that the working directory is clean. There's no work that Git knows that it should commit. Up to this point, is this clear what I've done? I've created an empty repository. I've checked what branch I'm on and I've checked the status. Those are three things in the setup. Is this clear? Uh, 
please let's have some interaction so okay yeah thanks now we'll go back to our 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 slides then check out what will be the next step this is it Main check check yeah. Sorry, can you go back a little bit? I'm kind of lost. Okay. How did you, uh, I'm sorry, but can you start again? Oh, I can't start. I can't start again because there's nothing that I've done other than typing this git in it. I've created. A, you can you can create a directory on a computer, right? You know how to create it. Yes. You can do that, right? Can you do it? Yes. Can yes. So can you open the empty directory on in your test editor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you done that yes, yes you have it opened yes yes it's open then you need to tell git to track this directory so to tell git to track the directory that's english to translate it into commands that git will understand we type git in it so go to your terminal and type git in it Have you done that? Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. My check. Uh, hold on. We are we are working with someone. Hold on. Are you done? Yes. Yes. Okay. Type git status. If you have to. So, what message did you see before you do that? What message did you see on your terminal? After typing git in it, what did you see? Let me see. Okay, let's do it one step better. Show us your screen and then show us how you're trying to do it and we'll see what we how we're gonna help you. Brand Ishimne. Okay, let me share my screen. You see my screen. Almost, almost. Yeah, you can see VS Code, but we don't see terminal. Yeah, I'm trying to set it to Ruby. You're trying to do what? Then I'm, um, then. So why is it that your location is in user guest? Are you sure you have you have opened the directory? Are you sure? Because you should be able to see the name of the directory. Did you open the directory you created? No. Well, why did you skip that step? I remember saying that. Can you can you go to my how do I create a directory? A directory is a folder. You are on what system? Mac, Linux, Windows? You're on Windows, Windows, I guess. Yeah. No, you can't create a directory by using uh, VS Code. You can create a directory by using your file system. 
create new folder, I guess you can do like right click, create new folder in your file explorer and you'll have a new, direct, a new directory, not in VS Code, in your file explorer. Sure. Have you done it? I created here. Here, I, we don't see. It. Okay, yeah. So then close VS Code, then open, but then you called it new folder. The name is something else that's really, you can say it to give practice or uh, something like that. <coughs> Okay, then open it with VS Code. Hello. Hello. Yeah, what Hello. 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 Okay, open yeah. your terminal. So you see that the terminal has opened in the location where the directory was created. Okay, git init, you're going to set up to tell git to track changes in your project. I assumed everyone has installed Git because at least that's the one thing you should have done from the previous session. So everyone else, I believe you have Git on your system. I did not, um, I did not go through everything that from the beginning. Okay, analyzed empty repository. That's good. Git status to look at the status of your project as of now, as of this time, which is about ten fifty five. Yeah, you're on branch master, nothing to commit. Congratulations, you've completed the steps of what I did. Remember, this is what my, my screen looked like? Yes, yes. All right, thanks. Any other question? No, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, one more person had a question, as far as I remember. Mic check. Check. I was about to ask what Brian was asking. I saw I saw it. Mm, okay, that's 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 great. All right, so we have finished the first part, which is the setup of uh, our Git repository. So we'll, now it's eleven fifty six. We are going to take a five minutes break. We'll come back at 11, no, it's 10.56. Five minutes break, that means we'll come back at 11.01. Take a break, grab, grab some water, uh, stretch, do something, then come back and well, let's do another hour of the session. Mark check. Check. Uh, before to take the break, I'm facing the problem. If you call me, you, Go, you do the same process and you write Git Unity. You get the message saying that Git, the term Git is not recognized as the name of who so CMG. Were you on the session on Tuesday? Yes. Well, you should have installed Git. That means Git is not installed on your system. 
You should install. I it. Have... What? I have it to install. Yes. Find out how to install Git, download and install Git on your system. Then the command will work afterwards. Okay, good. All right, thanks. So we've again used one more minute, so we'll come back at 11 or three. Ah, <laughs>
I check. Okay, break is over. So if you did we make good use of it? I had someone was playing some music. So that was some good use of the break. Are we back? Is everyone with us now again? Shall we, we proceed? Okay, thanks for that. Yes, I please, when I ask something, please make, uh, do respond. Um, that way we can know who we're with. All right, so next up, after we've set up our system, the next step will be to develop. So what are we gonna do in developing? We're going to check out branches, and uh, we're going to commit changes. So we'll do some work, check out branches, do some work and commit changes. So let's go back to our terminal and uh, do some development. Okay. So we have pretty cars is empty. Uh, let's say I wanna create a new file. I'll just do so I can, I can do File. Okay, you can create a file by using the 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 what do they call it the right the right pane, which has these controls, new files, new folder. But I like to create my files using. Okay, I like to use the terminal for commands, so I'll just do it using terminal. But you can just go to file, create a new file, and then you have an index.html. So we have an empty index.html, what do we do about it? Let's say we are, so let's see, what's the status of Git as of now? So we are on branch master, there are no commits, and there, there is one um, file that is untracked. Can everybody confirm that this is what they have on their computers? Yes. Okay. Thanks. So we'll add some content. Okay, so I'll just hold on. Just... I saw a no sir. My name is Sam, not sir. You can just say no Sam or something like that. Yeah. Sir sounds so formal and I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm a, I like to think of myself as, uh, as just another one of you. So don't, there's no need to, to be that polite with me. Just be free. And just tell me no Sam. So tell me Ihame Gilbert. I check Ihame Gilbert. He's saying no, sir. What's the problem? Gilbert, if you don't hear from you, then we'll just wait and see if you can type something. So I'll just add a, no, um, I'll just, um, how do we add? So I'll just add some, some. Some web uh, uh, pretty cards. So just give this a type. So I'm just doing some HTMLs. You can do anything you like. You, you've done this before. So I believe you know what we're doing here. So I'll just add some 
pretty cars. Okay, let's just say welcome. Pretty cars. Then I'll just add some paragraph that says our latch. No. Let's just say that this. Okay, I don't know what was wrong. Let's say no, not our welcome to pretty cars. Let's say your luxury is our concern. Find a car that suits your perfect day. Day, whether it is a date, family trip. Oh, sorry, this thing is more than like now I know why. Family trip or The next trip. Okay. So I have an HTML file. I created it, and uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just do some. So let's look at Git status. Git status. I'm still on branch master. Hmm. I'm. Wondering, this is the exact message we saw earlier, right? So why is it that after adding some content, we still get the same message? We haven't, uh, Git doesn't know that we've made some changes. Why do you think so? It didn't save. It didn't do what? Save. Save. Actually, I have auto save. So if I go to my settings on VS Code, I can see that I have, uh, where do I find it now? Okay, I have autosave turned on. So let me, autosave you can see after delay. So I have autosave turned on. That means this file has been saved. So it's not the reason. Like check. Check. Yeah, uh, I think it's because the, it has not been uh, staged because for something to be committed, I think it has to be staged. Yeah, so file, well, as of now, Git does not know about the changes, this file. So, so as of now, Git doesn't really care what's going on, going on in this file because it does not know about it. So I'll go ahead and, okay. I've been given a few suggestions. You can use git add file to include in what will be committed. Okay, that sounds good. Git add index.html. Okay, then I'll look at the git status again. Git status is your friend. If you forget about everything on this call, just remember one thing. Git status is your friend. Do git status as often as, often as possible to find out what's going on under the hood. Okay. So now, see, it was red. Now it has turned to green. Changes to be committed, new file. Great, okay. So I'll just go ahead and add another paragraph. I'll just say we have a range of cars from, from, from let's say from, I don't know, from basic to SUV and, and what? And sports cars maybe. Okay. 
Then I'll go to my terminal, look at the git status again, says that it's a new file, now it's been modified. So now are you seeing the, the, what we talked about in the slides? This is the modified state of a file. Remember, the first state was unknown to Git. Now the second stage is modified and the third stage is um, staged for committing. So right now, anything that is in red, Git does not know about, Git is not, okay, Git may know about it, but it's not ready to stamp it. That means if I commit right now, if I commit right now, then Git will not care what has happened in this file. In other words, if I do now Git commit, then the files, the changes I made before will be the ones that are added and the changes, the new changes will not be there. So to avoid that, I'll add it again. Okay, so since it's been modified, I'll do another git add index.html. Then I'll do a git, git commit. When you commit, you have to give a dash m, which means message, create homepage. Use messages that make sense, that messages that describe what you've done in a succinct manner. So everything that we've been doing is just to create the homepage. So I'll just say create homepage. One file has been changed, 14 iterations, and uh, this is the mod. So if I do git status, my friend, I'm on branch master, nothing to commit. Working directory is clean. Yeah, this is what I like. When everything is clean in my working directory, I'm very sure that I'm very confident that I've cleaned up my workers the way I wanted it to be, and I'm ready to do the next big thing. So are we together up to now? Let me first. Are we together? Yes. Great. Yes. Okay, that's good to hear. Yes. Anyone with the challenge? Okay, let's proceed. Now let's say I, I okay, I'll just go ahead and present again. Well, what do I want to present now? Desktop one. Okay. Mic check. Check. Uh, what? What? Can hear you. I'm not sure we know what you said. Uh, on the staple, touch index.html. On the what? On the step where you wrote touch space index.html. Okay, that step is my, is how I worked on my computer. You do not need to do it. Unless you're asking me what it does or something like that, but don't tell me it's not working. It's not part of this session. <laughs> well, what did you want to tell me about it? Uh, what, 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 uh, how, how it works, the, the, the uh, touch. So we can the... talk about that if we are learning Linux operating system. So it's not related to web development. That, that is a concept that is related to Linux operating system. So, and unfortunately we're not having any session on that because that's what we're focusing on. But just so that you know, that's a command to create a file. Simply put, that's just a command to create a file. Okay. Yeah. Okay, shall we? 
Shall we proceed? Yes. Okay, so let's now go ahead and uh, let's see what our file looks like in the browser. So this is our file. We come to pretty cars, your luxuries are concerned. We find a car that suits your perfect day with it's a date from family trips for your next trip to the store. We have a range of cars from music to SUVs and sports cars. Okay, let's say I like my page. But now let's say, okay, I want to do something this. I like my page right now, but I want to add some CSS. Okay. But I'm not confident with CSS. So the CSS that I add may not be so good. So in, in that case, I do not want to mess up my good, lovely homepage that I've made. If I want to try out some CSS, which I'm not sure of, instead of doing it on my lovely homepage, I can create a new branch, try out some CSS, and if it works out, bring it back to the main work, okay? Is that, is that clear what you're trying to do? I'm just going to try and style it. And if it works well, I'll just go ahead and incorporate it in my next um, branch that I'll be creating. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna create a branch. You can create a branch using multiple ways. One of the ways will be to do a So git checkout dash b means new branch. CSS experiment is the name of the branch. If I do enter, I'll see switch to a new branch, CSS experiment. My friend, I'm on branch, CSS experiment, nothing to commit, it's clean. Wow, I'm ready to go. Sam, can you uh, zoom in a little bit? Zoom in. Hmm, yeah. Let me see. Uh, use command plus. On on on, on VS Code or on browser where now? On, on VS Code. Let me see if I let me see something else that I can try. Let me let me first. Let me see if I can do like how the screen and. Okay, let me see. You'll tell me if this is any better. Is this any better? Yeah. Uh, but someone, uh, where was, uh, was that? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, all right, thanks. So, we have, we want to try out some CSS. So I'll start by creating a CSS file, new file, index.css. Okay. Uh, then I'll add it. So I'll look at the status. Okay, I have a new file. I highly recommend, if you're still learning, I highly recommend it to get to check out the status so that you know where you are in time. So I'll go ahead and add it. Relation. Okay, then I'll split, I'll 
Okay, let me split one. No, I don't even need to split. So let's say H1. So let's start with what? On family. Okay, let's do for everything. We'll have a font family of uh, I like I like the cedar. Okay. Then we'll have so those are the changes that I've made to my file. I can do let's say what else do I wanna? Okay, let's say H one. I want to align the text. Line center. Then I want to add some, let's say, I want to add some padding to the paragraph. So P tag, it will have some padding. Padding, I only want padding top. So let's say I make it two M. Let me see. Two is not good. I'll make it three. Let me see. Four. Okay. But then now I have a problem because I've applied this to the um, to the P tag, and both they now have changes. They, they now have a padding top, but I only want to do it for the first one and the second one is okay. So I'll do, I'll just go ahead and add the modifier here. See, I can give this a class that says this will be a Jumbotron. Jumbotron, if you've used, if you've used a, if you've used CSS, you're familiar with it. So I'll go ahead and add this to Jumbotron. Then yes, this is how I want it. Okay, I'm happy with the work that I've done right now. I'll go, I'll check out my work, its status. I've modified index.html, I have index.css, which is not tracked. I'll go ahead and add index.css. Then I can check my status. I have a new file and I have modified index.html. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and also add it. Good, add index.html. It's status. Okay, I have a new file and the modified file. Use git reset head to unstage. Okay, I don't want to unstage, I just want to commit. So I'll go ahead and git commit message. Um, what will be a good logic, logical message to what we've done? What will be a good logical commit message looking at what we've done? Who can tell us a good logical message? Styling. Styles addition. Okay. Levi Ukwishaka, you said styles addition. Styles addition means we've added to something that was existing. Did we have any styles before? So addition is kind of ambiguous. That could mean, it could mean we didn't have any, but it could as well mean we, mean we had some. Styled homepage, that's pretty good. That's what I did. I styled the homepage, styling homepage. Yes, styling. <laughs> so you, you from, Styles addition to just styling. To be more specific, it's we've styled the home page. So we can say uh, commit messages should be imperative. So instead of saying styled, I can say style the home page. Okay. 
I've made a commit. So I have, as of now, if I check out, I have two branches, Git branch, I have CSS experiment, I have master, I'm on the one that is highlighted in green is the one that I'm currently on. If I switch to master, check out, take a look at my browser. See, master still has the original lovely page that we, 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 that we created and CSS experiment had, has the new changes. Okay, so at, at, at now we've done, we've done development. So we've developed the page, we've done our web development, we like our page, we've done some modifications and uh, that will be, that's the second stage. Anyone with a question here? Kwibuka Eve, sorry Samuel, how did all those two files added in terminal? Which files? Uh, yes, mic check. Check. Uh, yes, uh, I was wondering like in our, in our terminal, like uh, we used to add like index.html and it was added well, and also index.css, but like I was wondering like how, like how did all those two appeared, appeared in the, in the, in the terminal? Like, can you go above, above terminal? Yeah, let me that scroll code? up. Uh, well, uh, I, I scroll up. Cleared. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, it was, I don't it was cleared. Like, uh, so like for we, example, like that's new file index.html. Like under it, it goes index.css. Under it. If they are staged, they'll, they'll appear in the same category. So they'll be all under the staging category. So if you are there together, then that mean they're either both staged or they're both untracked. That's basically what it means. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, I'm getting the point now. Sure. Yeah. Then Mugabe Chuti Inyas, you've asked, you've asked why main, not one master, not main. Hmm. I'm wondering why master, not main. There's no reason. As a matter of fact, I can rename it master to main. Let me do that. So I'll check out. I don't even need to check out. I can do. Git, git branch, no, it's git branch m master to main. If I do git branch, CSS experiment main. So I had no reason, actually. It was given to me by default. Now I've changed it. Are you happy in Chuti? <laughs> nice, okay. Okay, so are we good right now? Everybody with me? So far what we've done? Yes. Great, so we can now, Great. we can now, so as, as per our slides, we are on develop. So the third stage, the first is the setup, second is development, the third, stage is the publish. Share your work with the team. Git is for collaboration. It's better. You can use it. You can use it alone, but it's better when it's when you are collaborating. Okay. Under collaboration, we'll do what we call push and pull. So I'll start with push, then we'll come back to pull afterwards. How are we going to do that? Wait and let me share again my previous screen. All right, so here we are. Okay, so I want to push my work. I want to push it to GitHub. If I do git, okay, let me say, if I do git push, 
Oh, fatal. No configured push destination. I have an error. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, how do I deal with this now? I'll just go to GitHub. So the first thing we're gonna do is configure the destination. We'll use GitHub. You can use GitHub, you can use GitLab, you can use Bitbucket. You can use anything you want. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'll use GitHub. Then I'll create a new repository. So because this is a new uh, project on, locally on my computer, I should create the mirror of it on GitHub. Do you see where the mirroring comes in? So we have it locally. We're going to create a mirror of it on, uh, on my GitHub. So I'll create a new repository. Name, it's called Pretty Cars. Pretty Cars. Description and optional house, no. Sorry, it's not house. What was I thinking? Cars for rent. Public, it's okay. Initialize with the readme. No, Git, no, no, choose a license. No, I think I'm good. Okay, I have an empty repository. First thing is connect the two. So I have pretty cars on GitHub and pretty cars locally. So I'll just go ahead and connect, connect them. This is the location of uh, the remote. I'll go on locally. Okay, I've connected the two repositories, but if I refresh, there's nothing. Because I've not pushed, I'll go ahead and push. Git push. Then I'll create, I have a new branch, CSS experiment. So if I go to GitHub, I refresh. Voila, I have CSS experiment. And I also, in this, the only branch that has been pushed so far. It has two files, there's no readme, that's okay. I wanna go ahead and also push the other. I'll just check out main git push. Okay, great. I have now both here. Uh, Sam, uh, we are not able to see your browser. If you are showing anything on your browser, we can see it. Oh, okay. Browser, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So we've pushed. You may you may have pushed also on GitHub for your project. If you've done that, congrats! You've mastered that. You've not mastered, maybe completed the foundations of Git. You know how to set up your repository. You know how to develop, and you know how to push. Let's now for those if anyone has does anyone have a question before I tell you our next exercise. So our next exercise we've done push. So the next thing is pull. Check. Can you go back uh, to your terminal and see something more about the pushing? Can you scroll up? Can you know, the codes are pushing? This, this pushing uh, is git push. It's right here. Yeah, so this link HTTPS that GitHub, it's the page, it's the GitHub page. It's what I created on GitHub. Um, I'm not sure, weren't you able to see it? I was presenting and you 
somebody said that they were not able to see it at the end. I'm not sure if you did not see me creating a repository on GitHub. We didn't see it, we weren't seeing your web page. Wow, sorry. So I created it on GitHub. This is, um, this is it. So I have, I use external monitors. So I, I'm not sure I'll be able to, let me see. Let me see if I'll be able to do that with one screen so that you can see it. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't know you were not able to see it. But it was just creating a repository on GitHub. You can just go ahead and create one. Uh, I was on my profile. Uh, not on my profile, actually. So I was on my... Okay, I'll need to I need to lower them the screen a bit so that I can see. Then so I'll stop sharing my video because I'll not be able to see what I'm doing. Can you see this? Can you? No, uh, you can see um, a black screen. Really? Can you share the whole window? Can I? Can you share the whole window? Because we, we only see like a black screen. Okay, hold on. Let me. How about now? Yes. like I need um, IT support to share my screen. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad you can see it finally. So, but this is basically what we've done. This is our work. And if you needed, if you need help creating a new, you just come to new and then give it a name, create a repository. That's all, that's all I did. So I can find pretty cards. So the next exercise is to pull. So if you want to pull, the first thing you want to do is clone my work. So there's a command to excuse me, sir. Uh, yes. Um, I had a question um, for pushing after pushing, for example, you have already pushed your work like today and tomorrow, tomorrow you want to add some uh, some information or some work that you did after after pushing. So could you please explain how you can match those information to the other branch you have created before? Okay, so we'll just fast forward, go in time. Let's say 
we are now tomorrow. Tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is Friday or Thursday. I don't know. Let's say we are now tomorrow and I've already pushed. I pushed all this yesterday. I want to do some more work. How do I be able to do that? Let me see. Let's see how we'll be able to do that. Let me see what I can. So, oh, actually, uh, there's, let's say I want to, so I'll just check out the one that has the style. Check out, oh, what's the name? CSS experiment. Yeah, that's it. This is not okay. This is our file. See that I have a typo. I wrote My check. we we have check. Can you zoom in your screen, please? Um, okay, let me do. So can you see it? Wow. Is this any better? Or uh, there's something else that I can do, but that involves moving between screens. Okay, then I can try that also, that it involves moving this between screens. Okay, so I'll put this on, it's on screen. Then I'll put this on, it's on screen also. Then I'll share my desktop. Okay. So now you can see VS Code very well, right? Yes. And you can see my browser very well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the only disadvantage is you can't see changes in real time. So let's say I'll just check my status, git status. I'm on branch experiment. Working directory is clean. I'll go ahead. So I've seen that I, I typed we, we as, as a capital, but I want this to be small letter. So I'll change this. This is already a change according to GitHub, not to Git, sorry. So if I do Git status, I'll see that this file has been modified. There's a way you can even see the modifications that have been made. If I want to see the modifications, I'll do Git diff. So diff will show you what has been changed. So you see that this line was removed and this was added. We was turned into we with small. So I've made new changes. Git status modified, I'll add it. Git add index.html, then git commit. What's a good commit message? What's a good commit message? I check. Okay, a good message would be like um, fixed typo. Yeah, this is a good message. I've made a change. You just basically go through the same process. You made the changes you want, you commit them, and then you push again. Oh, I'll just push again. Right. So is this clear to who, who, who asked the question? I did not get yes, to see your name. Yeah, but uh, but the, the other question I was asking, um, do you push it on the same on the same repository or do you need to create another one it depends on how you want repository yes you always push on this unless you mean branch but you always push on the same repository it means you can push on the same repository but on different branches yes okay thank you sure okay so the next thing is to pull. So I want to do this. I want to give this as uh, as 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 an exercise that you can do. 
So to pull, pull is also git pull, but I can't do it right now because I'll be pulling, because there are no changes on the remote. Git pull is helpful after that you've cloned the repository or you wanna get changes that have been added by your teammate. So if you wanna experiment with git clone, with git pull, go ahead and clone my repository. This is the link. Let me find you the link. Pretty cars, yeah. This is the link. Go ahead and clone it. I'll just put it for you in the chat. Go ahead and clone it. Go ahead and clone it. Then after cloning it, you'll have uh, the changes that you'll have basically everything. Make a new change and Mic check, are we following? Um, I, it's very quiet right now. I'm not sure I follow. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay, so I was saying to experiment with poll, you can you can do uh, you can create you can check out my work. I've given you the, the, the link. Then connect. So uh, uh, you can do to the commands that will allow you to do it is you'll do a git remote add again, that URL. Then after doing that, you'll do a git pull. Git pull. After doing uh, the, two, the two branches, the, no, the two steps, you should be able to use the pull command on, on your computer. Pull is for collaboration. So that's why I'm not insisting very much on it, but... Uh, it's something you wanna you may need to look into into the future. So yeah, we've done everything. We've done we've we've done setup. The the so the workflow is set up, develop, then publish. Publish can also be called collaborate if you're working in a team. So you set up, you develop, and you publish. Setup could include setting up databases, so many things working in a team, and then collaboration. Collab collaboration will be the last step that you do. So we're almost done with our session. I guess now we've done everything on the basics of Git commands. For further, for further reference, you can use the Git documentation or just use Google and say how to check out a branch, how to pull, how to pull a branch from GitHub. Or you there'll be resources that have been already shared. You could use that for for the documentation, how the rest of the commands work. work. Summary, okay, so if you knew all this, if you knew all this, then I could have wasted your, I don't know, two hours. Mic check, please, if you, mic is on, please mute it. If you knew all this, so I'll share with you. Clarisse. So if you wanna, if you wanna check out the couple of things, the pro tips you that you wanna do with Git, uh, let me show you a couple of things you can do with Git with, to make your development a lot easier and a lot more faster. For example, there's what we call Git aliases. So Git aliases will allow you to turn long commands into short, in, in, into short form. So for example, if you see that git checkout branch, branch name, branch name is, this is really long branch. Like uh, let's say new feature. This is long. You can create what we call an alias so that this is shorter. You can do git config, git config, alias dot, mm -hmm. 
So the, what this means is instead of typing git checkout, I'll type git co. So if I do this, I can type git co main, then I've switched to the main branch. And you don't need to do git checkout. You can do alias for anything. You can create a git branch, let's say, I don't know. If git branch is also like long, you can do like a short form, git config. There's what we call dash global to make it global, but I've already done it, so I don't want to repeat it. Alias dot branch. Yes, B, B, B. Then if I type git B, then I'll see. This is the same as git branch. There are even more, you could take your game even higher. So if I wanna, if you are on Mac on or Linux, I'm not sure about this on Windows, but if you're on Mac or Linux, you can also do something we call aliases. So you can do alias. Calling in progress. You can do what we call a an alias and then Alias, you can say, mm. you can say, for example, GB equals git branch. Then if I do git GB, it will just show me. So GB will be turned into git, git B. So GB will be turned into git B, which will also be turned into git branch. So. So you just end up typing like GB, then you see the the the, the branches the, the the branches you have. You wanna do it with checkout? It's pretty easy. Just do. So we have an alias which is CO. Do alias GCO equals git git CO dash B. Then if I do GCO new feature, we we'll just switch to new branch, new feature. If I do git branch, I've seen that. Uh, I'm on a new branch, which is called new feature. This is all that I had for you. Don't worry about the pro tips. This is for people who are advanced and I wanna make sure that I did not uh, waste your time looking at things you already know. So if you've learned something new today, uh, I'm really happy that uh, you did and uh, Everyone, for everyone else, I also believe this was a helpful session. Summary, usually I don't do summaries because I want to, I want like someone, like two people to tell us what they've learned from the session so that we summarize at the end of the session. So some two people to come off mute and tell us what they've learned. Mike, check. Check. Uh, I'm sorry for disturbing you, but I meet, I face with the issue of when way out to start with GT Unity. After to install my GT, I try to commit to light the command. So, GT Mike, check. Mike, check. So, please let's do that after the session. We we don't have time for that uh, right now. Okay. Yeah, reach out to me afterwards. Anyone else? So if you have a question, something is not working, reach out to me on Discord and we can have a quick session where I look at your blockers and I help you meet to solve them immediately. Just reach out to me directly. Do not speak to your TTL. Just reach out to me, then we'll sort this out. But I just wanted to hear from you in terms of what you've learned. So I, can't let, I need like two people to tell us what they've learned. Please summarize Emmanuel Vatungwanayo. Vatungwanayo, Emmanuel, actually, do you want to summarize for us? I've asked you to summarize. Can you share the link of that commands? The link. You mean like resources, uh, prints, resources? If so, yeah, well, you get links to resources, but those are my own. 
that I've come up with over time, but I'll just share with you a couple of things that you can use over the internet. Eve, I saw your hand up. You want to tell us something? What you've learned? Yes, uh, I think Sarut, Sarwin. Uh, uh, so like I was new to, to Git, using Git, but like after this session, I have learned a lot. Um, uh, I have learned how to like how to push my project to Git. Uh, like it's it was very helpful. I really thank for this session. Uh, yes, adding the file, pushing the files. Yes, thanks for the session. Great, thank you. One more person, Ange Pauline Umunyana. I can see you've raised your hand. Thank you. Uh, for me, um, I knew few fewer about uh, Giti. And now I'm able for creating repository, then um, adding some branches and then push it. I'm really thankful for what we have did today. And another thing I didn't know is how you can, I, I didn't know that you can push on the same repository and I knew that it's possible. So I'm really thankful. It's what I have learned today. You're welcome. I'm glad that you've learned in your things today. We learn many things, even if we got lost, but as time comes, we'll get to know them. Thank you for the session. Yeah, if you got lost at some point, it's the, that's the life of learning. We don't understand everything at the same time, but as we progress over time, we, things start to make sense. Do not, do not panic if you don't understand everything we've talked about. Just make sure you understand at least Git status. Know what Git is used for. No git status, the rest you'll figure out as you as you keep going. All right. Thanks everyone for the session. It's noon. Our time is up. If you have any further questions, reach out to me on uh, Discord right after this session and I'll be able to help you. As for everything else, keep learning and keep going. And uh, the sky is just the limit. Happy coding. That's how we end. That's how we usually end the sessions. We say happy coding. That means, you know, go out there and do stuff. Like have, have a good day. It's happy coding. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you around on Discord. Bye bye. Thank you. Sure.